and we are back at the shop of course today is kind of a easier day just because it's kind of cool out cool enough that i really don't feel comfortable with doing any gluing on the floor of the trailer so as you see we got the floor over here and i've got the workbench cleaned off so that i can put those pieces of plywood down there up here because i'm going to cut them down to five feet maybe a little bit less than that just because that's what they're going to need to be when i make like the galley wall and the cabinet that goes across basically i'm just cutting them down now so that i don't have to do it in the future and they're in pieces that are a little bit more manageable for me Now that we got all those cut, I need to figure out exactly where these spacers are going to go. And I think the easiest way for me to do that is to actually going to be to take the pattern, put the pattern up here that way. All right, so now we can see where the door is at. We can see where the cabinets are at and as well as where the galley wall is at. So as you can see, the plywood actually goes where the galley wall is. So that I can screw that galley wall into the floor if I so wish. Then of course we've got the cabinets. Now some of this was changed a little bit like the door was higher but that doesn't matter because we're not worried about that because well the, this is the part that we're looking at right here right the floor. The door is going to be where I'm going in and out of the most so I think that that definitely should at least have two braces within the door frame itself. So let's say one like right there, and one there maybe. That way when you're getting in, you've got one main brace on each side. Now remember, there's going to be insulation and plywood on top of this. So these here are just mainly so that there's not a dipping in the insulation from the top pieces of plywood. So since those two are about 16 on center, let's see what happens if I move the rest of them to be about 16 on center as well. All right, so I think I decided on 15 on center for this, because that'll mean that I have a decent distribution in the doorway. It also means that I have two shorter pieces here i don't know if i'll put these blocks in or not to make it so then it actually stretches all the way across but these pieces here like you can see it this one's right underneath the cabinet i'm not ever going to be putting much weight down there besides maybe my feet allowing that also allows me to put in an extra one on the front right about where the cabinet is so that if for some reason or another i need to screw in through the face plate down into the floor i'm not worried about it and i can do so safely so i think the next step is going to be to mark those all out and cut the insulation panels So what I just learned was I can't cut styrofoam straight. My left depended on it. Let's take a look. All right, so as you can see, I've got all of the uh, panels cut. But if you look, that's supposed to be the center of a board. That's supposed to be a center. That's supposed to be a center. At least these two are semi-close, and those are the important ones. This one also is close on this side. And these two I didn't really have marked out. I think this one might have been marked correctly first time but if you look at this side that one's correct that one's nowhere near correct that one's nowhere near correct at least they're almost the same distance off but that's all because the insulation isn't cut straight and I'm pretty sure these boards have a pretty bad warp in them as well all right so next thing on the list is to take out all of the boards here and glue and nail them into place and as i said that's something that i can't do today so let's go ahead and fast forward to a time when i can 
And just like that, it's a couple days later. It is 70 degrees outside, so I think I can at least do a little gluing today. But I have a confession. I've been working on the floor without you guys. Um, as you see, I didn't really do anything more that you can really see. So I do want to tell you guys a couple of things that I did do here earlier today. First thing is, remember how I said in the last portion of this video that I can't cut insulation straight? My life depended on it. Well, it would have helped if I remembered that I could have used that. That's right. Table saws cut insulation perfectly straight. What do you know? So, what I ended up doing is I did end up taking out some of the insulation panels. And I had a few extra pieces. So, I actually cut those out to be about 15 inches across or 13 and a half to account for the width of the bars and now at least the bars are at least kind of in the same spots that they should be they're about a uh, half an inch off of their center mark but at least they're kind of where they should be at anyways and now i also cut off the ends a couple inches short because I think you can see in the last portion of that video how I had little pieces like yay wide going down into the sides. I just didn't really like that. It just didn't look nice. Now mind you, this isn't something anybody's ever going to see. So it really didn't matter, but I wanted to do it a little bit better because, well, if you're going to do it wrong, you might as well just not do it at all. So I also went and cut off a few inches short from the actual length and then I measured in between and cut out actual sized blocks for those to fit. So that one, it's better insulation. This one I didn't do. I'm not too concerned about that one because that one's down by my feet anyways. And I also put in these little chunks for these short boards. As I mentioned before, those short boards really don't matter. So I'm not too worried about those ones. It will be perfectly fine. I'm trying to use up a little bit of my scrap here where I can because as you guys know, lumber is expensive. Now I also found out that I am about a 16th off width wise on the front of the trailer, all the way down to the very end here. It's like right about here, it gets a 16th off. I'm not gonna worry about that because I don't think it's gonna make that big of a difference when I go to do any of the back portion of it especially because it's actually like four and a quarter, or it's four and a half and one sixteenth thick. So really, I'm actually a sixteenth thick on one of these sides here. I'm guessing it's this one here, but I'm not worried about it. I'm just going to go with that sixteenth extra because hey, it's a sixteenth extra. So that isn't going to be an issue, but what I need to do at least today is I need to take out these right here and I need to get them glued and stapled into place. So I think I'm going to do that is one at a time just because the, I got to deal with the insulation and the insulation's got to be in there to be able to put the board where it needs to go. Alright so now I have all of those glued and nailed in. Speaking of glue, I was actually just using the tight bond two that I had left over from. Actually, I've had this stuff for a couple of years now and it is getting a little thick. So I'm just trying to get it used up for things like those that didn't really matter, but I wanted them glued and tacked down just so that I wouldn't have any issues when I actually put the top pieces onto it. And while we're on the topic of things from a couple of years ago, I've got this PL Premium that I mentioned that I was going to go ahead and put down into these spots here. So I'm going to go ahead and see if this stuff is actually still any good and put it through with the cock gun because, well, I want to fill up those areas just because the tighter this thing is, the better off I'm going to be in the future as far as any water penetration and things of that nature.
All right, so it just rained here a little bit, which really brought up the humidity quite a bit. And I'm getting kind of hungry, so I think I'm going to go ahead and let this dry while I eat. And hopefully come back to this yet later today to put the top layer onto the floor. And I definitely let it dry for more than just a couple of hours. It is now the next day and definitely about time to get those glued and nailed in place. All right, and here we go. We now have a floor. I am very happy about this. I can lay on it. I can walk on it. I can, so that's good. But as you can see, what I did here is I took two four foot wide by five foot long pieces and I put them side by side here, nailed and glued them down. Then I had a scrap piece just like that little scrap piece there and I didn't want to cut a full piece of good plywood to reach all the way across to here. So here I've got just a little foot wide piece at the end, which is perfectly fine. The plan is to have some kind of pull out here for the stove anyway, so nobody will ever see that anyway. So yeah, I think that this turned out all right. As you saw in the video, once I glued and nailed everything down, I took the router around it. Now I'm glad that I did not cut these larger pieces to exact width because what ended up happening is for some reason that corner over there must be just a little bit wider or just a little bit longer or something on that side. So when I squared up this piece here, it ended up that this piece needed to go a little bit that way. So. Once I did that, I was able to have a little bit of overhang on both sides instead of just one side. And then I was able to go ahead and route this side as well. Now don't worry, as far as I can tell, all the measurements are correct on that side. It's just the way that the plywood lays out or had wrinkles in it or something. But either way, it is good to go now. So the only thing that I got to do left on the floor is to let it dry right now and get it painted which you will see in the next episode because I do believe I'm going to paint the floor as well as the inside of the trailer. So now that the floor is finished I'm really starting to think about the wiring of the trailer and all the little details like how I'm going to build my cabinets and all of that kind of stuff. Yes I already knew where the cabinets were going to go. I already know my measurements and such. But, you know, what style am I going to go for? Do I want sliding doors? Do I want actual regular cabinet doors? Or do I not want any doors at all? And while I'm thinking about this, I am going on a great Facebook group asking any questions that I may have. And that group is listed down below. And it's called the DIY Teardrop Campers Community. I highly suggest that if you guys are thinking about building any small teardrops, square drops, a different kind of travel trailer that I didn't list, make sure to go down there and check out their Facebook page because they are just a wealth of knowledge as well as the book that I've been going through and I have that listed down there below as well as a whole forum that's been around for years and years and years all about building small trailers. So definitely go and check out those resources, but if I have to say to choose one of those, I highly recommend checking out the Facebook group. If you wanna see where I take this and those from right now, make sure to check that subscribe button, hit that bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new video, and while you're at it, why not check my other social medias out as well. Until next time, as always, you have a good one.